Kid Ace, KJ, Kajana, Kevin. <laughs> yes, and, sir. Uh, my boy from, from high school, way back, little key. Um, when we were in high school, you actually played basketball back then. Um, have you ever, you know, like you used to play pickup basketball or whatnot? Yeah, yeah, I get active. I'm, I'm right now. I'm in a little recovery phase though, cause I tore my Achilles like back in November, playing oh. basketball. So yeah, I went through the, the whole thing, got the surgery. Now I'm doing physical therapy, but I'm already back. I go on the court a little bit, but I'm not like cleared yet to play for real. You feel me? I didn't even know that. To be honest, like um, from because like the worst injury I've had is like knee surgery. Yeah. But basketball, I know the worst basketball injury is like when you twist your ankle. Mm-hmm. Well, that's one of them. But um, <laughs> knee wise, I know. Okay, we're the same height, kind of. You're maybe like an inch taller than I am. Yeah. But, like, high school, you were known to be, you know, one of the dunkers of your. <laughs> and I know that um, you played. You played with. My little brother, I want to say little, yeah, yeah. six, six, younger brother. My dog. <laughs> um, what was like, what, I guess what was like the funniest part, knowing that you could dunk and that after people finding out you could dunk, it's like, how, how was that? Honestly, it was just, I used to just play with people's mental because they didn't know sometimes. So like, it just, they got to wait and see. Like occasionally I might get a little rebound next to somebody and somebody be like, Oh, you could jump, but most of the time I like to like, you know, wait and surprise them. And I don't know where I just go up there. All right, it, it kinda used to piss me off a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> because I know that I played soccer and you played basketball, but the fact that you were basically the same height and you'd be windmilling, you know? <laughs> it put it put a lot of us five nine, five ten dudes to shame. Oh, like, God, God did that. In in high school. I know Jet is like basically like your bro. Yeah. Um, but now he's doing photography. And yeah. so back then, of course, in high school, you did basketball, but you also still did music. And I know that a lot, a lot of people, obviously, that don't know us are people that went to Mount Verde knew of us that we would make like, you know, beats and stuff in, yeah. the, in the student center or yeah. playing FIFA or after practice, before practice. It was and, getting active. Uh, get active man how from from then did you know that you'd be in the position that you are today just to be able to make uh you know beats for different artists and have placements you know finally under your name like how do you feel honestly back then believe it or not i wasn't even thinking like that yet i was kind of just i was stuck in basketball still i was trying to go to the league so like i just did music as a hobby and like I just knew, I always wanted to just like make my own stuff. So like, and that eventually t- came into beats, but like, I just meant music in general. So like, when I was doing all that, I was just making whatever I just wanted to make. <laughs> I wasn't really thinking about much placements like that yet, yet. A little bit, I guess, but not too much. So I guess I would not have assumed that I would have been in any position like this yet, but yeah. So for, lesson. for producers, you know, they already say like, you need to put like 10,000 10, hours in. Um, and I, you definitely were someone that was continuing to wake up. I don't, I don't know if you made beats in the morning, but you definitely did during lunchtime, advisory, and you know, after school. Yeah. You went to Middle Tennessee State for some time, played basketball there actually. Yeah. And uh, that was actually my dream school. I know that Tay Keith went there. <laughs> yeah. He toured uh, Middle Tennessee State, but can. You talk about your experiences a little bit of going to Middle Tennessee State, knowing that it's a school for people that want to go there for music production. Yeah, and honestly, the funniest part about me going there, because I also want to, it was like one of my dream schools too, but like, I didn't even, um, when I went there, I didn't even major in the music program. I was doing like, um, it's called like mechatronic engineering. It's like robotic and computer and mechanical, like all in one. So I was doing some like other stuff, but like I was still friends with all the like music guys. So I kind of got in the music room still and I was like playing around with all of them. But most of my time, honestly, we went to basketball because like I was a walk on over there. So I went once I like before the tryouts, I was I had time, I was doing my thing. But after that, and I made the team, it was like straight basketball, like wake up, basketball, practice, class. Back to basketball, like, <laughs> film, weight room, practice—like it was crazy. Jeez, I'm like, like I forget 
I mean, now, of course, like I work with athletes still, but yeah. just the fact that you had the chance to be a D1 athlete, I never even, like, thought of it that way. You know, most of us just saw you as Kevin. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, it, was, it was fun. Was the schedule brutal? You know, like, what was it? What was the uh, schedule, like, at Middle Tennessee State? So, honestly, it was, like, wake up. Sometimes we had to wake up and do stuff, but other times, like, no, because I like people had class and stuff early in the morning. So like, you might have your typical class when you wake up early classes. Though you get them out the way, out the way, out the way. Then you go to practice. You got film. You probably got weight room, and you probably got practice the whole like till night. After that, you might got like chill a little bit. You know, going to PT, get some ice on your knees. That was my routine anyway. I used to have ice on my knees every day because you know we had the bad knees. Knees no so, joke. Yeah, that yeah. So. But that was like almost every day. And sometimes we travel. That traveling was pretty cool. I get to like, you know, skip a little class sometimes. But like, besides that, like, it was just like a, a straight routine of like that type of stuff all the time. And sometimes you get days off. But most of the time, like, it wasn't, it wasn't much days off. No breaks much. But I loved it though. I was trying, you know, I was trying to do my thing in basketball. Right. And after, I know, you transferred to Temple. And I know from just the stuff that you showed me so far, I still remember when we had our little group chats with like Jacob, Evan, uh, Jose, <laughs> yeah. Jeff, but you would send pictures of like the engineering stuff. Yeah. And it was like, I can't understand any of this. Like it looks mad stressful. Yeah. Like, why, why the sudden switch from, um, I guess, or not really sudden switch, but just like what inspired you to get into engineering? Honestly, and it's, it's, it was like the switch up of life, kind of, because like when I was at Tennessee, I was doing the basketball stuff, whatever, but I wasn't really doing music. And for one, I was a walk on, so I wasn't even playing much. I'm gonna be completely honest about that. I was sitting bench, but like after that year, even I, I play a lot in practice and stuff. So it's like I still had the the like I could still play with them and whatever, and it was still tough on my body or whatever. So my body was pretty much hurting. You're I'm so like, dang, am I really about to do this for the rest of my, like, college? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I'm like, my boy Mark, he moved to Philly already. Oh, shoot, Mark. I, I, yeah. I forgot about Mark. Yeah, yeah, that was that's a big component to the story. Because he really, like, hit me up at Tennessee. He was like, yo, bro, I'm about to go to Philly. Because he had a, a boy. For, he was at New York in Hofstra. One of his roommates was from Philly. So they was about to go to Temple, both of them. And he hit me. He was like, you got to come, too. I'm like, shh. I ain't about to like, I don't even feel like doing the application process. Like I didn't have no time to write no essay on top of the work I had to do for school. So he wrote my essay for me. I don't know, <laughs> I don't, you know, that's crazy. But like, yeah, he did that. I was it, whatever, whatever, cool, submitted it. I got accepted. Man, I went to go talk to my coach. I said, listen, I'm out. And that's when I like just made the switch. Like if I'm gonna do music, I learned that you gotta be like fully into like what you're gonna do. So I can't go to school to engineer and do me. I could, you know, it's like, it's people probably doing that, but it's a lot like, it's a lot more splitting my brain, you know? And that's like, I wanted to kind of not do that. So I was like, Psh, yeah. I'm gonna just study music in school, get my degree or whatever. Cause my parents really wanted my degree to me. I, I, music, it was music regardless. I didn't really care if the college had to do with it, but I got my degree in music or media and communications type stuff. And then I was doing music out of school too. So it was like all music after that. Mm -hmm. Like how did, so I know at Montverde, we obviously met at Montverde. I can't lie, I do not remember the day. I just know that one, you were Osei's teammate and obviously from uh, the comedic mouth of Jacob Borden and you know, Evan, just like meeting the group there, like knowing that all you guys were from uh, the Virgin Islands. Yeah. I know that we obviously met Mr. Clapper's class, history class. That's, yeah. that's yeah. when I met you. Uh -huh. yeah. But um, so obviously we first bonded over music. But right. How did you actually get into music? Because I know that the Virgin Islands has like a lot of, you know, had a lot of history and a lot of culture with that. Like, how did you get into music? Yeah. Well, honestly, it was just from like, definitely from my parents, like my mom and father. My, my, my father's a DJ. So like, I'm pretty sure I was listening to music in the womb and all that. And um, my mom, she loved music. She was playing, she always plays it all out, like all the time. So like my parents, like I, I don't remember a time where there was no music in my life. So like, 
I probably always had rhythm or whatever, but I remember one day, like the only memory I really have is like my mom took me to a jazz concert and I just saw the drummer and I was like, yeah, that, that guy. So I started doing like, she put me in drum lessons cause I was banging on pots and pans too. But like she put that me- was, in, You was, that was you. That yeah, was, yeah like, I was one of them. Drummer yeah. Charlie Poof, you were yeah. hitting real pans. No, I had like sticks. I have a picture, a big picture of me and sticks and stuff. And I think a pot's on my head. I don't remember, but like it's some stuff like that. So I was like, I was doing all that stuff when I was small. Then she, they just started putting me in lessons, mm -hmm. drum lessons, piano lessons. In high school, I took guitar. Like it wasn't really guitar lessons, but it's like a our school does like this thing called mini gusto, where it's like a week of activities, and guitar was one of them. So it was like a week of guitar lessons. But that taught me a lot. Like shout out to that teacher. That it taught me a lot. So I kind of had like a bunch of lessons of all the like basics of music, and then. I started drumming for bands and stuff. And then that kind of just escalated to me seeing all the instruments and knowing what everybody does. And I'm like, okay, I could do this all myself. Cause I knew Stevie Wonder did it himself a little bit. I'm like, all right. And my dad kind of just gassed it the whole time. Like keep getting me stuff to do this. Like when I asked for a PS4 for Christmas, he got me the able oh, to buy it. Goodness, the bribery. He bribed me, didn't he? No, he didn't get me no PS4. What do you he, mean? He got me Ableton. I asked for a PS4. I think I asked for Ableton too, though, but he just disregarded the PS4. And then I just got Ableton. I remember that so vividly because I was like, wow. When I was a kid, I was like, wow. But when I'm at this age, I'm like, dang, that was a good move. Hey, I'm not going to cap. That's an OD move for Pops right there. Like, yeah. things, like, I just, that man really playing chess. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. He was playing chess like crazy. Like Ableton. So that's how the, and that's the, really how like the, the Ableton Ableton started to use. Yeah, like he got me Ableton the software and the controller thing. So it looked like I had some kind of new device type thing. So I was like, I'm going to use it. Pops was scheming. <laughs> he just scared you because. He was scheming because that's all I did for a second. I just went straight on Ableton. And I started making my own stuff. And it was kind of like I just turned into a producer from there. That literally explains everything. Because I, I remember uh, making beats at the student center. I'm on Ethel Studio. You yeah. and and I couldn't learn Ableton for the life of me, but I know, or like during the weekends, like before we had like weekend trips, yeah. um, we were always, bro, those were the days. We'd be like cooking up, making beats, low key not knowing what we're doing. We just trying to make some fire. Uh, uh, yeah, facts. I just had uh, Zashley on the podcast actually recently. We were talking about Tune Day, yeah. and I still remember we were in, uh, I guess like Jets mom's crib and we was all in there just chilling listening to beats and stuff yeah a picture i want that picture really bad but yeah. he, he's like one day like we gonna look back at this pic and see these two like like together doing some great things so i, I literally remember that moment and i was like yeah, yeah it, it has to come to i low key remember that once you mentioned that moment i can't lie yeah I, ketchup was literally recording on a beat I, I i i can literally picture the moment that's fire yeah no, i remember all that <laughs> That's, that, that's crazy you remember that. I was so tucked back in my head, but like I remember <laughs> I, I still remember so many memories at uh Mount Verde, bro. Like the the tables, the uh, like the lunch tables. Yeah. People don't know how different like I guess that lifestyle is, you know, back then when you when you're an athlete, mm -hmm. but still just the comedic craziness. Like <laughs> the, the people are coming back to my head, like nom. Fact. That's like <laughs> I, I was in a group chat with him, so I like kind of like he's still there. Well, Nam, uh, it, I can't remember the little Russian kid's name that always used to shoot threes. He always used to just read. Oh, that was the hard little brother. Yeah, Mish. 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 Yeah. Uh, I still talk to uh Philip. Philip Petrosev. Yeah, that's fire. And he he was, was in the Olympics. He, he in the Olympics. That's fire. Oh, uh, for Serbia. Yeah, that's fire. I didn't, even, I didn't see his game, but that's that's tough. But like, I man, I'm I'm thinking of way too many flashbacks, bro. No, that's I, crazy. I just remember sitting at the table with Bakim, Yohani, Taufik, you, Ose, Taufik. going down the line of like the lunch table. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, for you in because I'm just I'm just thinking of the memories right now. Hold on, I wasn't even thinking about this. No, like you're bringing me back. Um, you know, during lunchtime, I guess, how was it on your side of things? I know for me, I was at SEMA, 
and our day ended at 12 you know starts at what like 8 8 30 mm-hmm. and then you got advisory right before lunch and then you walk from the school side all the way down to lunch and we you know we had the same lunch i don't want to kind of expose the montverse sports eating situation but we had to eat um like chicken that you could cut into it and it could possibly bleed we had the mixed veggies and you just put a little bit of pepper on it that's the only seasoning they had in there you had to season it yourself oh that's, you had to do. that's the first time i had mayo chuck the senegalese yeah. kid taught me how to make mayo chuck yeah i've been doing that though i ain't gonna lie <laughs> how was it for you like then just like what what did that schedule kind of look like i guess oh it was like damn near the same thing like we had the same wake up, go to class, same time when we go to lunch, and then we go to practice the same time as y'all. I'm pretty sure we used to even finish a little bit before y'all sometimes. Cause I remember sometimes I used to be waiting for Jet. Sometimes he might be waiting on me if we had a long day, but like y'all was usually out there longer than us. So like it wasn't anything crazy. Crazy. Oh, he's in the heat, bro. That's different. Florida yeah. heat. Sh- two hours. Nah, but Coach Joe had us running on a track this one year. Oh, Every every day coach joe katuka well me and him actually like in high school we used to butt <laughs> we used to butt heads because of I'm course sure. this man used to call me like you know every fat name in the book <laughs> like, I remember, uh i was watching y'all practice one day right because i was injured it was like senior year or something because I, I i was after my knee surgery so i, I can't do anything yeah but i think you know how like before practice you know we got just putting up shots and whatnot and <laughs> and he keeps shooting the ball and he's like just missing 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 oh i did so like, yell something at him he's like such your fat ass <laughs> like, uh, he's terrible he just got on me bro he was like, like, you look like you could eat this basketball. I was like, oh, wow, that's, not, that's crazy. But no, but I see Joe now. Like, I'll see him randomly out in Tampa. Um, or I see him like an Orlando Magic game or something like that, you know. Um, man, Joe, Joe's one of the funniest. You had him as a coach, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what was he like as a coach? See, I only knew him from Ose, you know what I'm saying? What was the coach perspective from having Coach Joe, the OG, the legend? He was, coach. He, was, he was a tough coach, but I'll say this: I I like tougher. I like tougher training, so it was good for me. Mm-hmm. I would say there was some kids probably didn't you know care for it because they thought it was too tough. But it was it was fine to me. He used to get we used to we used to put in work. I ain't gonna lie. Mm-hmm. He, he he liked me. I liked him. It was cool. I ain't really had no problem. Sometimes you know, but I ain't gonna lie. When he was mean like that or whatever, he says whatever. I used to like go back at him sometimes. So I didn't really like whatever that stuff was. Not like go back crazy, but like yeah, of course. he knew I didn't care. Like uh, it's whatever to me. So that's crazy. Did you? So like I know. Um, are you good? Well, I know uh, CBD. That's what it was called, right? C- yeah. CD, CD, CBD. CBD. Well, Center of basketball development. CDB, Center of basketball development. That I know for me, having like I guess the type of athletes in the class, you know, like RJ, of course, the RJ is low key the, the guy, you know, back then. But um uh I seen Michael DeVoe recently. Really? Like, yeah, uh Michael DeVoe. Um Andrew Nemhart. Me and Jet was actually in Atlanta watching this game. He's he actually got us uh or he actually invited Jet. But I just ended up going with Jet, and so he had an extra ticket. As um, Bruno Fernando, yeah, on the thing. But just like back then, to me, those guys were just you know like peers. It wasn't like you know, everyone was kind of just like praising them type thing, you know. So like how it was in general, I guess being beside some of those guys that, um, you know, definitely are in the league right now. People see him in a whole different light. Like back then, we see him as like clowns and classmates. Like how how was that for you on the basketball side of things? I'll be real. It was it was actually cool. Like to me, I was, I'm like you. Like I low-key just saw him as peers. Like just because in my head, I guess like I'm on that level too. Like whatever I'm gonna do in life, it's gonna be big. So mm-hmm. like I kind of just I was always cool with them too. Me and Jet had this one class that was with RJ and Andrew. We was just all at the table every day just. 
talking and laughing, all type of shit. But like, it was, it was, I can't even like, it didn't even feel like anything crazy or nothing like that. But like, obviously they're doing some big stuff now. So like hindsight is 2020, but like mm -hmm. back then it was just friends doing what boys doing what boys do type stuff. But shit. Yeah. Like, uh, what's what we call it? So of course, music, basketball, and then placements came after college. When did you get your first placement? Probably like I think my probably my like first couple months in Philly, I guess. Like first, it was probably the first month or two. Mm -hmm. And it was with a dude called Zasosa. Because the thing is, yeah, he's just, he's just like an underground Philly artist. He's still pushing right now. He hot. Mm -hmm. But he just saying hit that. He he got hit that. We trying to take him up there. But it was like we came in, Mark's boy, his name PMT Audemar. He a rapper in Philly, too. So he brought us. He was staying with us in, in this apartment. And he was kind of like telling people to come through. And he knew Zasosa's people. So like he, they were starting to come through every day. We were just making beats, and we had a mic. So eventually, we started recording them because we wanted them on the beats, and we ain't, we wasn't about to do studios and all that. Mm -hmm. So eventually, they just started coming every day as our stores started coming around. So that placement happened easy. Like I was mad quick. Like, and that wasn't like an industry placement, I guess per se, but like I would count that as a placement. Mm -hmm. And it's like if I get another beat with him right now, that's, like, that's, that's definitely a placement. Yeah, he could do views. So it's like that alone. Like, and then we just recorded, we was recording everybody. And so we were getting like a bunch of little placements with a bunch of different little artists here and there. Like some of these artists are even bigger now, too. Like, mm -hmm. and like some of the, like psh, it was a lot of people we kind of like messed around with that we didn't know, like what you know, what they brought eventually. Yeah, exactly. So we ended up meeting a lot of artists like that. We got with Za, got a couple of songs, and then that placement kind of led to another manager hearing about us, and that just led to more placements. And it just kind of kept going up a little bit, little bit by little bit type thing. Which one do you actually like doing more, like engineering or producing? Producing. Producing, but you nah, do it. Honestly, I'm gonna be real. The way I, the way I see it, being that I do both, mm -hmm. I see like producing and engineering as like one sphere. Ah, okay. Um, so like, split. Can't yeah, have one. like I have to split it job wise. Like, yeah, make beats this day and yeah, engineer this day. But when I do my own stuff, I'm gonna make a beat and I'm an engineer as I'm making a beat, oh. when I'm fixing the beat and stuff. And then even when I'm like doing my vocals and recording, I'm engineering while recording. But I still might change something in the beat, so it's kind of like everything's happening at once. Mm -hmm. So like I say, like I like the whole process. So I'll count that as engineering. Like I like the whole process. I love the whole process as a whole, like equally. Like, you have a favorite artist that you've worked with so far, or just in general? Like who have you who have you worked with that you like really enjoy working with? This guy named Lights in Philly. Mm -hmm. He's Lights. like, hmm, Lights. Lights, yeah, I, L I H T S L I H T Z, mm -hmm. and he like going up right now. But like, that boy is different. Like, different. Like, you gotta check him out. Like, I don't even know how to. How to lights? Yeah, cause like I ain't gonna lie, he got this one song called Mixing Signals, right? And I recorded it, so I don't know if I'm buying. Hey, it. hold on. What, what did you did you demo it? Mixing Signals. I'm trying yeah. to remember. I, I was probably playing it on my story and all type of stuff for a while. I ain't gonna lie. Makes me signals. I might be thinking about a different song. Cause I remember I made an uh, album, not album cover, a, a single uh, song cover to. I can't remember that. For me? Yeah. Like in the back of it, it had like the city of Philly and. Oh, no, that's Traveling Streets. Traveling Streets. I know it's. Yeah, like, yeah, no, no. yeah, that wasn't it. No, mixing signals is his stuff. Like, cause it wasn't even my, it wasn't my beat or nothing like that. Like we've produced stuff for him, but that this was just a, I think a beat off YouTube or something. But it was a guitar acoustic, and he just started saying, he just started talking on the mic, and he said this little thing before he started. It was like, all right, Lizzie, we got showed on the real you or something like that. I don't know, you got hear it, but 
he just started talking. I remember recording it. I was like, this is the best song I've heard in a while. And still that song to this day is like competing with the best songs out right now. Like any other song, like that song is crazy. So right. like, like, like yeah, yeah. But he got more than that. Like that's just my personal favorite. But like he got crazy stuff. Like he's crazy. Melodic, just crazy flows. Like he's crazy. So like obviously you know how much work it goes into actually making beats, engineering, continuing to do it like over and over and over with different artists. What is the number one thing that stuck with you on this journey that you could actually like, you know, pass down and tell other people that want to be, you know, producers or engineers or just simply want to get placement? Oh yeah, that's a great question because I honestly have the answer already. And this is going to be some real stuff. Like, ready? Because mm -hmm. let's see. <laughs> What's it? Consistency. Okay, okay. Just making sure. Just making it's sure. really that's really the, the number one thing. Like, just stay consistent with making it. Whatever you're doing, like, if you're a content creator, cool. Just keep making content content every day. If you're a producer, produce every day. Songwriter, songwrite every day. Because it's like a, a muscle memory thing. Like, bad. Like, even me, I stopped making mm -hmm. this for a second because I was engineering so heavy. Once you record so much and you engineer so much, it's like less time to make beats. You know, but like. So like I kind of like be rough on the edge sometimes or like certain things I just don't like what I'm doing as much so I might throw it away. But like the more you train that muscle and you get it back to like you doing it every day like not like not nonstop but like as long as you're doing it every day consistently. Yeah, you're going to get better and better and better and it's going to stay sharp. Yeah, bro. Like I I feel like I have that that heavy heavy blah, 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 my bad. I feel like I have that heavy difficulty uh with my parents because they obviously are, aren't like, you know, musically or creatively inclined. Mm -hmm. But um, I used to always tell my mom, like, hey, mom, like, if I'm producing, send me a text. Like, don't open the door. I'm trying to, like, lay something down or, like, finish my thought, you know, get it across or just, you know, continue to stay con consistent. Yeah. That was, um, you know, in high school. You know, college, I had, like, all the time in the world to produce and, like, that's all I did. Sophomore year, I had a five day weekend. It was amazing, cuz. Yeah. yeah. I just, and like, I would literally just go to class and go back to my room, make beats. And since that, at the time, my um, roommates were mm -hmm. basketball players. They would always be like out. They either at, uh, you know, either in class or practice. So I had the whole room to myself. So I just yeah, played five beats all day. Yeah. And that was fun. But now, of course, like, since I'm doing video, I don't have the time to make beats i can but you know like you said earlier like you kind of like giving your time to two different things you don't really get to sit you know flocking on one yeah i'm trying to get back to it but at the same time i know i'm gonna be like aggravated because i'm i don't get to put like four six hours eight hours how i used to i just gotta be like all right i got like an hour to like throw something down or just add something to a save beat and that that kind of that ruins me, bro. So, like, for you, if you're making a beat, do you have, like, a specific creative process? I know you're you're really good with the keys. That's something that used to piss me off because I couldn't, like, play as good as you did or just play by ear. And, um, yeah, man, that's such a gift. Like, playing, playing from just, like, hearing something or knowing what you want to play and putting mm -hmm. it down on the keys, you know, obviously changing the instruments later. But what well, do you have a like, creative process? <laughs> Lately, I've been going pretty like freestyly. Like I'll do, I'll start however, pretty much. Cause like honestly, how I look at music now is I listen, I look, I listen to the more prominent stuff in the music first, like like whatever stands out first. So whether the song has like bass heavy stuff first, or it's just like a rap song and the beats mainly the really part, or if it's like a country song and the guitars is really what's going crazy. Like I'll, I'll pick which one I like. You know which whatever i'm trying to do so i'm trying to make a pop beat today i might start with the melody but if i'm trying to make like a rap or like island sounding beat i might i might start with the drums sometimes but i might still start with melody most of the time mm -hmm. because melody is king so like it's always best to like know where you're going with the melody so but, that is probably the most controversial topic especially in the music industry and amongst producers because yeah. you already know like Restate the question. 
in your opinion, what's more important, the beat or the artist? Oh, man. Oh, man. Honestly. Well, I would. I don't have, like, a full answer. I've only been the producer, you feel me? So, like, I would like to get my cut and fair portion if I were to get a placement. You know what I'm saying? But oh, I know. Bro. True. So, like, I'm, I'm going to say it like this. Because I don't know what I don't know what the right answer is either, to be mm-hmm. honest. But my take is probably split still, and mm-hmm. only because this. As long as you have a melody, people can sing along. So like, you can have a whole beat playing a club with no words, and people will rock with that. That's that's pretty much EDM. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then <laughs> that's no insult to them. It's just. Most of the just have some melody going. <laughs> yeah. Call me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but um, but then like you could also have you could pretty much have an acapella of a song and that mm-hmm. can rock by itself. So like my answer to that is whichever one has the better melody. Mm. If that's a good answer. Okay. Yeah, cause like, bro, even like Burner Boy's song, like, yeah, it's a hit, but it's called yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, uh huh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a hit. He didn't really say much. So are you saying like because he made that into like a tune itself? Just the melody of it. It's easy to sing. All people want to do is sing along. That's all people want to do. They just want to sing along with you, man. And, uh, well, when I found that out, like, like I guess the differences between like the genres, especially because I know like hip hop, beat wise, especially in Atlanta. Shout out to Atlanta. Yeah, their producer scene, they're very heavy on the drums, super heavy on the drums. Because if you don't have the drums correct, most likely they're not gonna play it in a club, you know. And that's where around there, yeah, a lot sure. of the music gets like passed around. Yeah. So, um, with the melody. Me personally, I'm not the best with making melody, but I'm really good at sampling. And I can't stand that because obviously I'll get sued if I make a beat and I don't have a sample clear, yeah. you know. But um melody wise, how frustrating is it for you as a producer engineer if you put a lot into a melody, right? But you can hear the different pockets of where artists can definitely like insert themselves into it and then like butcher it. Oh, that happens every day. That's part of the man. Like, my boy Mark, he just made a fire beat the other day. Well, I ain't going to say all that. But (laughs) the point is, most of these artists nowadays, the goal, they're not really just trying to make a hit. And what I mean by hit, yeah, everybody's trying to make a song that's a hit that, like, everybody loves. We all want that. Mm -hmm. But but a lot of people aren't focusing on the actual science behind why certain songs get played more and like people like more and gravitate towards more. So like a lot of the times you might make a beat that you think is fire and is perfect for whatever hot artists could go on and make a hit. Probably, they probably could, but you're not working with them. You go work with whoever it is and they might butcher it and not put a hit on it and just. <laughs> yeah. we, ain't, we ain't making it out. The- <laughs> 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 it out. Oh, man. That's just how it is sometimes, man. It's it's, it's not a, always an up road with this, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like gambling. That's how I look at it. <laughs> Yo, that's a crazy perspective. You're yeah. right, though. Yeah, no, it's like high-intensity high gambling. Yeah, I know. I know definitely from my perspective, like, back then, the main, like, the, honestly, honest to God, the main objective was I need a hit by tomorrow. So I can get out of my house. Like I just wanted to make money off of it. Cause like I, I love producing and I still love producing the same exact way. Um the motto was genuinely just like I can I can like build a legacy for myself and peace of mind for myself to continue to do the same thing and get paid while doing it. Mm-hmm. And so obviously not knowing, I guess, the business side of like the industry. I'm sending all my packs, all my beats. It's like, you know, uh, how big sending emails are, you know, when you see on Twitter, like someone be like, send beats. Like, oh, we got artists in the studio right now or a manager. They're like, oh, send beats to this email. Send beats, send beats, send beats. 
the amount of emails are racked up. I had over like 360 emails. I had a list and and like I had meal tracker, you know, or like for um I got that, yeah. Man, the amount of just not even like anxiety, just like anxiousness I would have in class. Because I'd be in classes that obviously I like hated to go to, but I can't wait. I could leave pay off my loan, pay paid it off myself. I just need something to hit, need something to hit. Like I'm looking at Tory Lanez, look at Roddy Rich, Young Doug at the time, you know what I'm saying? Like I just I just need a response. I just need a uh no, nah, I know I did anything. Anything. I'm, I'm looking at how many times they open in the emails. I remember when um Tori used to like record on it on his live and he opened it, the email eleven times once, bro. I started panicking. I'm like, oh, I hope this is it. Like it'd be it, bro. I'm watching him listen to the beat. He's like, oh that's fine. That's fine. I put it in the vault. Ah, finally, fine. Nothing. <laughs> but um, with that, like, bro, I, I definitely persevered as much as I could. Yeah. Like, obviously, like, not having a lawyer, not knowing how to actually communicate with these, like, A&Rs, managers. What is, like, the hardest thing that you, I guess, had to accept being a producer and, like, knowing, um, you know, just how to get your beats to the right people and actually getting legit royalties out of, you know, out of placements? Man, that's a good question because, like, honestly, I don't have it 100% right now still. It's like, honestly, the name of the game is if you're not really making, if you don't got no motion, people don't want to join your motion. Scary. So, Scary. So, like, yeah, no, really. And it's like, I don't even got no crazy, crazy motion. So, like, I, I, I would say by, like, just the grace of, like, I don't know if I'd call it luck because it's not luck, I guess. It's a God, yeah. for real. Yeah, like, it's God and, like, I guess us just working and being prepared for the moment. But, like, the one manager we knew, we kind of stopped working with him, but he tried to connect us to this other guy that was, like, a manager. And then we stopped talking to the other manager, but, like, we stayed with that one manager. And it's, like, that's working out great. He connect us with a a guy that collects royalties and stuff gets us more money, you know, for like stuff we did in the past and stuff. So it's like, you kind of just need to like trust your gut, but like do your own research too. And like be prepared for stuff. Cause like, honestly, the, the, the our manager now, boy, he be managing producers. Like, I don't know if you ever heard of a producer named Nick Pats, but like, of course, man, what? Yeah. Nick, like, I'm sorry. That said, that looked like glazing, but like <laughs> Meek Mill. Yeah, sorry to meet. Meek Mill, yeah, Meek Mill was one of my favorite. Oh, right. so you know Nick then? But literally, the more like you, I could see the shift instrumentally when Nick Paps came to the scene. Oh, that's crazy. Study Nick Paps because you know producer wise, like yeah. you, start, you don't like envy, but you obviously appreciate like their work ethic, the way that they actually articulate their process and you know they're like oh i want the beat to sound more like this i want to sound more aggressive i want to sound like you know they know how to bring those different emotions across yeah. so like you like bro like that definitely helped me go sound a lot same with um his engineer i'm for i'm blanking on his name right now um cruz cruz yeah cruz and so yeah. um i was following nick paps for a little bit i would watch like you know whenever producers go on live where they post their little beats or like they post previews of beats and then you actually hear how a beat sounds on it yeah yeah but keep going bro i, I, I would like to hear more bro, I, I, that was great to hear because honestly like my manager literally connected us with like so i know nick now and i know Cruz. so That's like great. yeah so like and these are the people like we kind of like looked up to yeah in a sense like you know i didn't really like know nick as much yet but i did hear his his tag before I met him. So like, I knew kind of who he was. And then we met him. It was like, it was kind of a quick process. Cause our manager, we met our manager pretty quick and we didn't know he was managing him. Yeah. And Cruz is, is boys with my manager. So we, he, I've like recorded for Cruz a couple of times in some sessions and stuff. So like, it was, it's just like that. And that's just off of engineering slash beats kind of, because the beats helped there, but we didn't really get, we didn't get no placements from that situation yet, but that's the next step. You feel me? Like we try to turn ourselves into that that level of mm-hmm. of placements and like work with Nick and, and other. He got another producer named Young Talent. He's going stupid. Mm-hmm. And like 
bro, the whole squad, we like, we about to go dumb now. I think we got a little artist named Jay King. He's about to go nuts. And we got like one of his singles called Antidote. That's one of my favorite songs too. So like, okay. I just be excited. Like, yeah, to work on like, it'd be, it's a good, it's, it's up, there's downs, but like there's upside too. Like when you find the right team and the right people, it, it gets so much clearer and you just, it, you could do it better. Then it's nonstop from there, honestly. Yeah, for sure. It really is. I know, like, I've watched so many different – I mean, you probably, too. We probably watched them at the same exact time. Because, mm-hmm. you know, when you see certain producers or maybe you see them, I guess, come up, and then after they get their one opportunity, and it looks like the rest is history for them. Like, I'm thinking of Twisted Genius. Mm-hmm. He said, I think he sent Lil Baby the uh, some to prove beat like four times. And then that obviously started a crazy email crash because everyone's like, oh, shoot, you can send multiple beats over and over and over. They'll probably look at it more. So that I, happened. I, I done did that. I, I didn't did that. Shoot. I done got placements off, boy. You heard this beat two weeks ago, but you, we in the studio. <laughs> we in the studio now. Now you like it, huh? All right. Um, what should we call it? I know, like, Roddy Rich was one of my favorite artists in, um, in college, no, he was I, I don't listen to mainstream music anymore. That's for my um, my faith, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, back then, I still had the appreciation for his ability melodically to continue to flow and actually like harmonize. Like he's mm-hmm. such a talented artist that I like listening to him, bro. Like I was, but going back to when you were talking about, um, you know, like the science behind how to make like a good song or a hit song. Yeah. He chooses his syllables, like the syllable placement, very specifically. And like the box, like if you were to count and actually look at, uh, the, you know, the amount of syllables and vowels. You really listen, I ain't gonna lie, because that's that's why the box is such a hit. Crazy. Like, and even like this one songwriter, like he says he's so confused on the box, like, because it doesn't follow any, song, any songwriting rules, but that's literally the one rule it follows. Like catchy flows and the math makes sense. Like every flow is gonna hit at the same time, whenever you think it's coming. Mm-hmm. And once you border that flow, a new one's gonna come in that's fresh. So it's like, bro, Roddy was my favorite artist at the time too. So you, you ain't telling me no lie. That whole album, I had it on repeat. Bro, so did I. I just, oh, so did I. I, I can, have, I'm having flashbacks of college. I told you the story how I met him too, right? Hey, you told me. All right, because you- right. I was about to say that. That's the one story, bro. It was right before the box came out. Mm-hmm. I was in LA with Young K, and, and he's a local Philly artist. Yeah. We was just mobbing in this one studio. I can't. I think it was Paramount. And that's nuts. Yeah. So he K leaves the room, goes meets talks to Roddy or whatever. K comes back. He's like, Roddy, about to come in here and check out some stuff. I'm like. <laughs> man, this man walked through. I'm like, oh yeah, this is Roddy Rich for real. When I tell you, he went up to the speaker, plugged his phone up, or to the aux, plugged his phone in, and did this to the volume knob. Yeah. <laughs> I said, oh man, and he just, dude. But it was the box. That was what we listened to. So I, I'm listening to it. So I'm like, this is the most fire I've like ever heard in my this life. Is this is like before it came out. This is like a, a week max. I can't remember exactly the timing, but it might have been a couple of days after we did that, it dropped. You had the exclusive. KJ, no, you're like, you're so lucky, KJ. like it was mixed. Like it was mixed mastered. It was ready to go. I was like, and I didn't know because obviously I didn't know when it was dropping. So I didn't know like what I was really listening to. But when it came out, me and my boy Mark were hyped. We were like, bro, we really just listened to that song before it came out. Like, on some big paramount speakers like the big big speakers like yeah. it was and it was loud and clean though like it was crazy that was one of my favorite like times ever that's such a like man i don't i don't think there's a better way to describe what a, like listening to beats and making beats in a studio feels like to producers i don't think there's a way to describe it to the average person it nah. really is not nah. like i don't think there's anything better than than being able to hear every eq instrument Oh my good man. Uh, I, uh, um I know for me, there's different producers that I will always listen to, you know, or I'll just kind of like watch. Um, did you have any? Like, did you actually watch uh 
you know, just like people do tutorials or people do I watch a lot of vlogs and stuff like that. I remember when Gunny was doing vlogs. I ain't gonna lie, I, I was a YouTube rat, so I probably watched like I, I could probably pick a couple of names that I can remember still, but like if you pull somebody up, I could probably say, Yeah, I've seen him. Like I watched a lot of stuff. Like I know Nick Mara. Yeah, for sure. Easy. I was too easy. Mm. You really gotta go in your bag. Like I know everything from the lip producers to like the ones that just aren't maybe not as lit, but they work and post a lot. Like as long as they consistent and they got videos, I'ma know them. My boy does it. Shout out Nile. Now waves. Hey, bro, I, I want to meet him. Oh, he's from the DMV, ain't he? Yeah, I got it. Oh yeah, that'd be that'd be fine. Y'all be yeah, y'all be cool. Nah, also, he really my boy. Like yeah, we gotta do that one day. No, most of my friends in the DMV. Like I would see him. Uh, like after he would post placements and whatnot. I'm looking at my my middle school friends. I'm like, what? I'm like, how did they know this guy? Like they don't they don't follow producing. Well, like I knew him like personally. You know? Yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. Uh, what's my call? Be- you made me remember. Uh, I went to Atlanta. I w- I go to the Hawks games, right? Yeah. I used to go when Bruno was on the team. Um, shout out to Bruno. He actually, you know, yeah, that's right. Back from <laughs> way back. Yeah. Um, I'm walking through the Hawks stadium, right? Bump into a dude, and I'm like, I've seen this dude face before. Turns around, Ant Chamberlain. Dang. Boy, I almost freaked out because, like, you know, growing up, listening to your different types of producers that are your favorites, yeah. and you see them doing exactly what you want to do. Yeah. I'm looking at him dead in the face. He cool as dude. I'm like, like, hey, shit, man. yeah, that's me. I shook his hand. I was like, bro, like, I, I didn't know what to say in the moment. Not going to lie to you. That would be, yeah. I was not trying to tweak out or look like no little, you know, fan nah, That would be. That's how it be. But I was like, dang, like, these people like like this are actually just kind of like hanging around here like it's it's normal. So I remember um I think they had like a B competition that night. Um but yeah that the producer scene in Atlanta, bro, you gotta get over to Atlanta. Nah, that's the next goal, probably gotta Atlanta, Atlanta or Houston. Or whatever. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a move. Gotta get over. Yeah. I was feeling I'm I'm Atlanta. Wait, say it again, my bad. I'm gonna visit Atlanta before though, like a couple of times. So you'll see me there. So like for me from uh, over here in Tampa, the uh, tickets are dummy cheap. So I just pop over whenever. Yeah, that's yeah. I already know. This is my spot. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm gonna do it. Though. I'm gonna go it because people from Philly go to Atlanta a lot. So it's not crazy for me either. Mm. I just, I just, I can't keep traveling. It breaks up the motion of my sessions. I got that's true. That's I'm, about to, I'm about to get into stocks soon. When I get my stocks going, and I, I don't gotta worry about sessions. I'll be everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be taking them risk. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'll be taking them risk. Like I, I um I'm technically technically freelance. Like I, I work for different businesses as their content creator. So yeah. I create I collect a check from different places. Oh yeah, you're good. But um I don't budget that hard because I'll look at an opportunity like okay. I can go to this D1 game on my own penny, but I can actually get a media pass should I go. And so I have to look at the numbers that way. Like, how much is this plane ticket? I don't have to stay in the hotel. That's work still. So you mm-hmm. not, that ain't nothing wrong. That's, that's, that's Yeah, you should do that. An investment. So that's how I see it. Okay, yeah, yeah. If I, yeah. No, no, completely. But I think the... But the, you can work where you go, right? Yeah. I can't. Oh yeah, because beast, beast don't pay that 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 consistent. You gotta wait months for them checks sometimes. That's a good. So like, I need my sessions to to keep up with the little the little expenses I have and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, but the goal is to get the beats to pay. Like once you get a check every couple months, that check won't take you to the next check. But mm-hmm. yeah, I got right now. I got some. Producers pulled up because all I listen to right now is beats. I can't listen to you know mainstream anymore, really. Mm-hmm. But even if like say if, like future little Uzi drop and I hear it on like TikTok or something like that, I'll still listen to the beat. Fine. But, like, do you listen to songs and you can kind of see like the breakdown almost like the deconstructed breakdown in your head? 
That's the only way I listen to you. It's actually annoying. Because, like, literally people would be like, they'd be like, oh, did you hear what he said? And I'm like, sad. Yeah. Well, I was focused on that Congo or 808 or, or something else. Like, I don't know what. But, like, I also am a songwriter, so I do listen to lyrics. As much. That's why, I like, I'm going to be real. I don't know if this is the craziest thing in the world, but, like, I only like hits for real. And not to say, like, I'm, I wait for a song to get a hit and then I like it or not like that. Like, I like the science. Be, I am... I love the reason why hits sound that way they do, and it's because of the science behind it. Okay. Like, if it's a real hit, it should be easy to hear the lyrics at the same time as the melodies, at the same time as the beat. All of that should be easy to consume for mm-hmm. our ear, so I shouldn't have to split up what I'm listening to. And that's why I really like hits, because hits come natural. When you listen to a hit, you kind of just know the words easier. You don't really gotta rewind and be like, well, what he say? It's like, no, you the whole yeah. of the song. Dang. I yeah. even, that's a day. Yeah. See, like I, I've never done the artist side of it, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I've never I have literally never recorded or recorded somebody ever. I've just done the beat side of things, right? Yeah. So, when same deal. Whenever I'm listening to beats, I'm always the one to say something like did you hear that sample? Or like, did you? Right. Did you hear, um, I don't know. Like, oh, I like the way the 808 sound, or like a, a lot in uh, like Afro beats. I think it's called. They call it like piano. Like the the 808 will literally like jump up and down or sound yeah. like. Yeah. I love that. And yeah. So I yeah. Somebody, and they have no clue what I'm talking about. Now I'm a weirdo. <laughs> Nah, not to be. I would have probably been there like, yeah, I did. I did hear that. That's what I was listening to. That's why I said about the prominent stuff. Because, like, you know the song? You ever heard the song Wet by Tyler? But, like, the beat for that? Yeah, but we oh. friends, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Nah, but that beat is exactly what you're talking about. Like, that 808 bounce, bounce, bounce. Like, I'm a, I hear that first. Then I hear, I might hear some other parts of the beat. But because that's so prominent, I'm, like, focusing on that. Mm-hmm. My, um, I had a roommate, but he was also one of my best friends in college. Still my boy. Shout out to Rico Suave. Yes, sir. Um, my boy Rico. Rico Suave. Yeah. He is an artist, and he makes his own beats, right? And so in college, I would watch him record. And it's so funny to watch him talk. And he'll turn to the mic, and his voice will sound so different. Like, somehow his vocals just change as he starts singing. And I'm like, dog, how did you do that? Do what? And I'm like, go ahead, start start singing again. He'll just start talking, turn back, and it's like a whole different voice. It's weird. Yeah. But yeah. When we're listening to songs together, he will try to listen to what I'm talking about. And I was like, you don't hear that hi hat. It sounds like it's panned out to the left a little bit. You don't hear that like that synth that just comes in. It's like like heavy reverb right now. It's like panned out to the right. It sounds like you know, like I'm just talking. He's like, well, I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> Listening to the uh, the lyrics. So I was like, that's kind of interesting. I don't know what it's like to be able to like tune in to the, the lyrics like that, I guess. I only know the B side of things. No, nah, that's two people in this world. That's what I'd be saying. It's two people. People that listen to lyrics and people that listen to like melody and the beat more so. Because I have, I, I like to look at how people listen to music too. And like, I know that some of my friends know words like, crazy like some of my friends could literally recite the most random songs <laughs> but then it's like other some of my other friends they're always like in the back talking about some Ooh, you hear that thing in the background Ooh. yeah so it's like different things people kind of like focus on i guess so i got producers someone that i listen to all the time cost finger beats you know who that is Say the name again. How about put you on Costfinger. 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 K O S F I N G R. Like K O S Finger B. Okay. Brody is tough. And remix yeah. anything. Of course, like people that produce may say like remixing is easy, but the way that he does it is always catchy every single time. Oh, I like catchy. That's my he, favorite. He will remix anything to like a New York drill jersey type beat. Fire. I've been listening, bro. I've been listening to him for years. And um, it's almost like if you hear a sample or you just hear the song and you sample it in your head, 
he'll know how to sample it almost how you thought of it in a way it, it's like it's so weird to describe that, that's like that's the best producers to me um so there's cost finger right yeah let me see who else i got in the fall nick Merrill was one cash money ap was another sure i may have to go to my ig bezo beats bro sure bezo beats um that ended up making every season by Roddy Rich. For sure. A wild story, bro. So I remember one, Roddy Rich being my favorite artist at the time. I'm like 18, 19 years old. And I had a job at Publix, but it was in Orlando, like Claremont. And so I was going to school in Tampa. So I would have to take the Greyhound bus mm. all the way back every other weekend, do a shift, hop back on the bus and come back to Tampa, right? Wow. And I wouldn't want to take my laptop on the Greyhound, but I would bring it in my backpack and on like breaks at Publix, I'd be making beats. And so I remember, I remember he was like the first, you know, producer, I guess that's like up there, up there that gave me a chance. And he like, I remember him saying like, bro, like I really mess with you. Like if you got any melodies, whatever, send them over. I'll send a collab right back. Yeah, that's right. Cool turn like i was like oh like i'm getting out of here you know yeah, fact. of course they didn't happen but like i'm still very uh, appreciative of I, him I, like seeing me bro you know what i'm saying i'm i'm 18 at public so i'm over here frustrated because i gotta bag somebody's groceries and they're probably being disrespectful or something like that or you know but um sure that's obese was like the first producer to give me a shot yeah bezo there's a, a there's a producer. His name's Dayro. I met him in Atlanta. I'm gonna send uh, his IG to you. Yeah, I don't know if I know that one. I definitely, you definitely know some of the Migos. Um, DJ Darrell. Yeah. DJ Darrell. Yeah. And obviously it was TM88. For sure. Bricks Domain. You know who that is? Yep. Mm, I think I'm trying to test your. No, I'm gonna know a lot of these names for real. Pipe it up, TNT. For sure. Come on now. Pipe it up, TNT. Soggy, bro. Yep. Soggy, bro. Soggy, bro. Who's the... I know the new one that does a lot of, like, Yeats songs. B-N-Y-X or something. B-N-Y-X. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I met his manager. So, like, I'm kind of, like... I wouldn't say tapped in with them, but I could possibly get Luke's over there. So, he not too far. Are there any producers that you would like to work with? Honestly, but I'd be trying to work with the people that are around me. Like, I only really mess with, like, because you obviously, you know, like, this producer stuff is so hard. Like, you can send all the emails out you want, but, like, stuff be so wishy-washy that you don't know what's going to happen. It's like, when you work with the people that, that mess with you, it's like, you know it's going to happen. So it's much more confidence. So, like, I'm 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 definitely blessed to say that I can do this, but I'm trying to reach people like Nick, which is like he that's a good placement if I get anything with him. Cause he like he under the same manager as me. I yeah, we've tried to send the loops and nothing hit yet. But like we gonna keep trying until it hit and just keep building up like that. Like that's the name of the game. He right he we we met we met him, we've been around him a couple of times now. He already said like give me loops. I'm like, all right, it's, it's your job after that type thing. It's like, I, I it's, uh, something that I say is called Hollywood talk. You know, mm -hmm. you can kind of like talk a big game or you guys, you got a bunch of different ideas or, you know, hopes, dreams, whatever. It's just it's usually surrounded by Hollywood talk. It's like, oh, yeah, send me this. We're going to send out to artists. We're going we gonna to give you placements. We're going to go to these studios. But then, like, ain't no really. Hey, you, can't, you can't even get a text back. <laughs> right. um, uh, my one of my good friends, actually. I haven't even met him physically yet. His name's Tezo. And and he's taught me actually how to sample. And he was one of my first like producer friends that I met through collabing. And he's also from the DMV. But he taught me how to sample. And that took my producer game to like the next level. He taught me a lot of things. He used to send me like the VTS plugins and everything. Yes. And just Valhalla. Like all these, all these different plugins. Like, so I'm, I'm hella appreciative of him doing it. So I know that how powerful collabing is. How would you say for like other producers to go about collabing? 
Yo, man, you, yeah, you need to collab. It's, like, crucial. Like, sometimes I work on a lot of stuff by myself because that's how I like it. But every time I collab, it's, it's like, worth it. Mm-hmm. Something good comes out. Like, I just collab with Mark. I collab with Mark a lot. But I, we just collab before this call. So, like, I mean, we always want to keep that, keep doing that. It's how the best music comes usually. Like, more two, two brains is better than one. So, would, you, would you suggest producers to like put their stuff on YouTube or get a store? Like, how would how would you go about that process if you knew what you knew now? Um, damn, that's a good question. Cause like, dang. Um, actually, I think it's more of like a case by case thing. Like, if you, cause I know some producers that do make a good bit of money from YouTube. Like if one beat hits and it gets a bunch of views, mm-hmm. and like you can get paid for that beat. But like at the same time, like me personally, I don't put any beats on YouTube. Just one, cause I just don't want to keep up with the that the constancy of that. But like at the same time, I also don't have enough beats that I'd want to have on YouTube. But then, cause I'm trying to like send beats to artists and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I care more about the, that side of it per se. So. I don't really hold my beats for YouTube. So it's like a case by case thing. Like if you want to do it, you can get paid good. But like you don't have to. Hmm. I get paid the other way. I get paid through like some labels sometimes and like royalties and stuff a little bit. So there's multiple different ways. And I'm like I know I definitely want to get back into music and I don't I don't want the knowledge of knowing how much money I could make if it was in certain places or, you know, make hit songs, whatever, get all these types of deals to come back. I just want to make it for the sake of like producing in general, which is a beat, knowing what kind of melody. I miss that, bro. No, that's usually the best music. Like when you make it just for yourself, like that's one thing that kind of like messed me up now. Like now that it's a job, it's kind of like harder to make music sometimes because it's not just what I want. But like, you find a balance, man. You know, I chose this life. But what generally like keeps you pushing to do it? Because you already know. I mean, that's probably with anybody with any job. There's gonna be days where you obviously don't want to do certain things. But like, what keeps you motivated and ambitious with continuing to produce, even especially on the days where you don't even feel inspired to do it? Honestly, my answer to that is like discipline. Like discipline beats everything. Like I ain't I ain't gonna lie. I've been through a whole year of just not feeling motivated to do any of this music stuff. And it's like the one thing that carried me through that is being disciplined. Cause like you 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 could be not motivated, but if you're disciplined, you're gonna do it regardless. Cause just discipline comes from doing the same thing, knowing you need to do it. And, like, whether it's, like, a rainy day or a happy day, sad day, whatever, like, if you stay disciplined to do what you're going to do, you're going to always, like, reap the benefits later. And, like, I believe in the long, I like long gratitude. We all, like, nowadays people like all that short-term gratitude. But it's, like, if I see a goal in the next couple years, I would really rather hit that goal than Mm -hmm. fall short doing something else that I don't want to do, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like... The way I see it, I really don't have a choice. Like, this life has to be my life, so I have to stay disciplined doing it. Mm-hmm. So it ain't even about motivation anymore. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. that's out the window. Facts. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's honestly an interesting time, especially with content. You know, not everyone wanted to be a quote-unquote content creator, but, you know, like, the most way, the most efficient, I guess, and the most um easiest way to be seen is to put your own stuff out. So I know producing engineering but now of course we got to you know tiktok instagram how do you how do you go about choosing what you're about to publish? no cause <laughs> the fact that you're even talking about it like i just looked at the time and i'm like dang i did not post today and i'm like ah it would be like that though you know that's that the struggle with it like i made beats today i did one part fine but then it's like forgot to post my content and yeah, um, it, it'd be annoying sometimes. I can't even lie. Like me personally, I'm one of those musicians where I'm like, I don't want to do content. I don't care about it. I don't like it at all. But what I'm not going to do is fall behind. 
and mm-hmm. I'm a winner and I'm going to succeed anyway. Like success does not care about nobody's excuses is whether you succeed or not. So that's it. I'm making myself do the content stuff. And I just, I'd be forgetting. I'd be like, it's not natural for me yet. I'm trying to train it better, I'm trying to get better at it. But like, it's a struggle. I ain't going to tell nobody no lie. I wish I, I low key wish I was one of them artists that was good at the content and my music was poop. I low key wish that, that, cause, hey, why is that? Cause it's not about music no more. Wow. It's about business and branding. It's like, my heart could have broke just then. Not nah, for sure. Nah, it's it's like wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna put it like this because it is about you're the music. Wrong, though. you're not wrong. That's the thing, it is about the music still. But like, if you want to make music and do it full time, you better expect money. And then it's like, how does that money translate? Not through no streams, unless you have one of them real hit songs, then the streams might do a little something. Yeah, cool. But like, if you don't got no hit songs, you're not getting no money from streams. You're probably not getting no money from shows like that unless you built yourself up nice. But like shows will start paying if you have a good little, you know, following. But like most of the time you get money from just your job or like, I don't even know. So the name of the game now, if you can get eyes, you can you can generate money. Mm-hmm. And if you want to be the artist, you got to generate money for yourself to eat, pay your bills, whatever you need the money for. So you better hope you build your brand and your, your, your cult following that's ready to buy your merch and come to shows. And, and they're in love with you, not your music, because nobody really know. Like, it's, it's everybody doing music now. Mm-hmm. And they could go listen to whoever they want at any time. And you don't got to wait for nothing no more. You know, it's so wild, bro. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm one, one, I'm thinking how good God is. That's first and foremost. Facts. But just the fact that well, I'm, I'm where I'm at right now, honestly, all off of like, not confusion, but I'll say this, like, of course, playing soccer and only having like tunnel vision of just like, I'm only doing this to get a a scholarship. Like the love for the sport dies so early. And Mm -hmm. because of that, and also being injured at the absolute worst possible time that I could have been injured at, after it was like the only thing that I could do was pour out my ambition and grit energy into something else that I actually loved, which was music at the time. Right. So, um, doing that and then obviously finding out that if you're producing it every single day, it doesn't matter how many beats you make. If you can't make a sale off the beat, you're not going to make money. So obviously I'm like, dang, okay, I got to figure out how to make like Almost like how does it how to make it look prettier in the sense of thumbnails, clickbait, you know what I'm saying? How to package it up better. Because obviously most of the beats that are on YouTube, you can find a fire producer that probably doesn't even know how to do thumbnails. They put it through one of those websites that just kind of throws it up on YouTube for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like how do you actually create a brand? How do you create a look? How do you create um a message, a theme, like all of that? And I started studying that on my own. I started I had an iPad. I had a personal iPad, and of course, the iPads that my brother gives out. Mm-hmm. I did that all day. That's yeah. all I would do. I would look up. Um, I would look up obviously like movies behind the scenes of that, what they would do to write it, how they would write it, their process of it, and then I would literally move that and shift it over to, um, YouTube and, uh, branding, um, monetization, just like all those different things. So when it came time for college, um, the degree that I went into was called New Media. And so at the University of Tampa, they offer a program where it's like an umbrella of, they call it like an umbrella of uh, majors. So where you kind of like dabble a little bit right. in everything in digital media. Yeah. So truthfully, I ain't trying to come for the school like that. <laughs> but I learned a lot more on my own because of the resources that they had. So mm-hmm. because they did have the resources, I was able to, you know, know a lot of what I know now. But yeah. the frustrating part of it is watching other people realize what I already knew so much later. And I'll give you a perfect example. When I, <laughs> I worked in the uh, sports department for the school and mm-hmm. I already knew how social media worked. Like I almost like studied it in my own time. I had classes on it to where I was like, 
I would fight the teachers. <laughs> like, bro, I'm like, we're I'm I'm in class, and the teacher is talking about how like the news is very like money centered. So sometimes they may even put something up on the television if it's not healthy to eyes, but it brings in more money. They're gonna do it anyway. Yeah, and sure. actually, uh, looking to see how social media works psychologically, you know, business wise, and just um looking at the real business model behind social media yeah. so i'm i'm up with the trends i'm up with the anal analytics i'm yeah. up with the algorithms so i wanted to start shooting vertical which is a huge contradict contradict to uh cinematography to the videographers you know at the time yeah, you're the genius. Thing. so bro i was like you know what i know that i'm still gonna shoot why but right now like instagram is doing reels and obviously when like something pops off at first whoever does it first it carries yeah. so at the time the team that i was working with was the, was the volleyball team you snapped you was snapping and i like I, I brought it up to the person that was above me at the time shout out my boy dan dan the man but yeah. we we actually bumped heads on the idea so yeah. i remember telling them like bro Instagram has these reels right now. I think we should start doing reels. And of course, off rip, everyone's answer is no. Because it's like, why would we change video to vertical? That makes no sense. It's not like a thing yet. But I'm looking at like, you could be the first ones to do it. Yeah, he was genius. Right. But it was the frustrating part of like, I've had so many other ideas before where it was like that. Like NFTs, I had so many <laughs> different Tan, you know, digital yeah. tangibles before yeah. NFTs were a thing. So I'm yeah. just like, what? like, how am I doing this? Like, it, it's not, I don't know. It doesn't feel like an accident. Yeah. I just, um, that's what I do now. I actually help businesses and help brands. One, kind of like figure out what message they want to get across to the public. And I actually want to help them with content. I got to help them with graphics, photos, video. Um, Bro, we need to talk more then. You can help me. Oh, say less. Bro, this is what it's what I do and it's what I love to do. We're going back on the like the money side of things. Yeah. People will hear you, people will see you and be like, oh, that's nice, and then not know how to use you. Which right. is wild. And then literally have the same exact problem. They they need help in the exact area that I'm good at. And they don't realize that until like they start seeing me do well, which is crazy. Craziest thing ever. Yeah, that's how it be. Craziest thing ever. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I, that's what I do, bro. Now, now that's what I do. And of course, I would like to be known more for producing. That's what I would like to obviously be paid in full, consistently. Do that and also still make videos. I I would like to make a movie one day. But um, again, going back on the grace of God, seven years old was when I remember saying. At like a, a homeschool co-op, we had this little red carpet rollout for the kids. So they're basically trying to make it seem like Hollywood or Vegas, like a theme, yeah. year thing. So they have this red carpet. They have someone that holds a mic. They got this big fake camera. And you're supposed to just say like, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And so I remember ha literally having in my head, it's just like me watching a movie that I made because I love Transformers so much. But I was like, I want to be a movie director someday. Like, why? I was like, well, uh, the friends that I have in my neighborhood, I have a really good time with them. And usually when we're watching movies, we're all laughing, we're all enjoying each other's company. So I would like to continue to make that for other people. And so, like, oh, and that's really nice. So I know they're they're saying it because it's just they got to keep it, keep keep the line moving. I'm like, oh, that's nice. That's great. Fantastic. Cool. Yeah, I remember saying that. I, like, genuinely meant that. Yeah. All right. So to go from producing, to go to learn graphics, to learn brand brand development, to mm -hmm. just all these different things, just to come back and understand and love cinematography, <laughs> film, you know what I'm saying? Like all these different things at once. I'm like, dang, like it almost feels like God pre pre planned a lot of this. Yeah, it does. So it's just like I don't, I can't complain, and I cannot get off track. Cannot get off track. Facts. So yeah. that being said. If knowing that music is your calling, 
Yeah. And obviously, you may have um, sidetracks, distractions, or just um, downfalls. You know, you got your own problems too sometimes. Mm-hmm. You already said um, consistency was a big word. Consistency and discipline. Discipline. Consistency and discipline. Do you have anything else that you could tell people that obviously uh, are chasing after their dreams that may just sometimes feel confused or they might not know their, like their purpose? You know, do you have any advice for that? Yeah, honestly, follow your gut is probably the, the best. And lastly, like, if you feel like you don't like, I don't want to say this in a lazy way either, like, oh, I don't want to do work or oh, I don't feel like doing that. If you know you need to do something to achieve a goal that's burning inside of you, do that. Like me, being an artist, being a producer, making music, making stuff people like, that burns inside of me. I can't not do it. Mm-hmm. It's not really like a choice. Same thing as basketball. Yes, you can't, even, basketball. you can't even sleep correct if you know you're doing it. Yeah, exactly. Like, same thing with basketball. I got to play basketball. I still go to the gym every day. I'll be like, today I'm only shooting five shots. Next thing you know, I'm in the gym for like two hours playing with people. Like, it's the same thing. Like, just do what you love to do. And answer your gut, feed into it, and just keep doing that stuff. As long as it's good and productive. Like, if you like doing some crazy stuff, don't do not do that. But yeah, no. yeah, but if you got some good productive goals, just even even if they might be like, some stuff is crazy. You're not going to make money, especially like this music stuff. Like, you're not going to see money the way you, it looks until it, and even when it looks like it's money, it's probably not going to be money <laughs> until you get it for a couple of years. So, like, yeah, it really gets like that. But, like, be smart, follow your gut, and just do what you love. It's going to yeah. take you far. It definitely will, bro. Like, I, I genuinely feel like that. And, like, that's. That's why I also like these talks, one, because um, I'm hoping that obviously other people that may, one, feel like unheard. That was me. Like, I still, to this day, sometimes feel unheard in general. But even now, I'm just, I'm like just discovering why that feeling is like inherently in my DNA almost, you know? Mm -hmm. Certain things that kind of get put onto you from like childhood, you kind of start discovering when you're an adult. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'm trying to one break that barrier, get over that fear, and like not live in that lie. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, so I know obviously back in high school, going all the way back to them days. No, I mean, we met in Florida. So like yeah. my life was different in Maryland. Yeah. In Maryland, um I grew up in Maryland for 15 years. You grew up in the VI, no? For 15 years. 15 years. That's crazy. The timeline yeah. actually is over. Yeah. What is what is the Virgin Islands like? Uh, beautiful beaches, sunlight most of the time. Um, it's not. It's like one movie theater, you know. What? Uh, yeah, like it's not big. Like my my my, my island. I come from Saint Croix, which is the biggest out of the three Virgin Islands. It's Saint Croix, Saint Thomas, and Saint John. And I come from Saint Croix, so that's the big island. But that in itself is only twenty three miles long. Like you could drive from one tip to the other in, in 45 to an hour type thing. Mm. So, like, everything, you don't got much of much. Like, of course, we got a lot of places to eat because we like eating. But, like, one movie theater, one mm. bowling alley. Um, you probably have, like, a couple of department buildings. But, like, the rest is, like, house, bush, <laughs> good views. <laughs> Good hikes, fruit everywhere. Like, bro, you could go on the side of the street with a man selling fruit and just like eat a bunch of natural fruit, like anything, like I don't know, much fruit you can think of. And then like, or you could go to the market, find some like seafood that somebody just caught, lobster, like conch, all that. So like, it's great to me. If the only you- problem would be, be like the power will go out. That'd oh. be like the worst thing I'll say. Like, yeah, we got power issues down there. That's the only thing I'll really say. If I had to say anything. If you can remember, though, like when you came over to like the U.S., what was like the biggest either culture shock or the craziest thing food-wise that you experienced, like the, the differences? Well, really and truly, I did visit the, the States before I moved a couple of times. 
And my my grandma lived in Maryland in DMV. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in, I, I was thugging through the DMV when I was young. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Shout yeah. out. Wow. Shout out. <laughs> yeah, fact. <laughs> but um, yeah. So like, I seen the. I remember the first time I ever went to the states. It was just cool. Like, the cities, the houses look so much more like. Um, I don't even know the word. Like, they look uniform. Yeah. Like every house. <laughs> like. I don't, yeah, I don't know. No, I, see you. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, they look. Every house look like uniform. Like that house, like that house, that house look like that house, that house look like that house. Mm-hmm. Same way, not like that. Like every house look different, bro. And it's like you like. So well, I guess not. I'll just fast forward. So when I came to the states to like Florida, honestly, obviously the food was different for real. Because like to me, I didn't know what to expect. But like the food does not compare to back home. Mm-hmm. Like back home, we really—it's probably not as healthy because like we really sauce it up. But like the food is so much better down home. When I went to the states, I was like, "Dang, it's just a bunch of burgers and fries." And then you already know my first lunch was not like, <laughs> yeah, the flaky <laughs> that, fish, that, that dry fish, yeah, that flaky dry fish and the flaky seasoned chicken and. It was healthy for us though. Like that's one thing I didn't realize. Yeah, of course it was. Like I, I really think back though, because like as a kid, you do not realize how hard it is when to say no to the food in America. Yeah, obviously, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, literally, it's hard. It's hard. Force, it, no, I was gonna say they force us on a good diet, but what were you gonna say? Oh no, I was just saying how like I'm having too many flashbacks. Right oh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. thinking about the food. Bro. Yeah, no, it was it was. It's, when I was young, yeah, when we was back then, I was dreading every lunch period. Never looked forward to lunch. I, I just knew I needed to eat. <laughs> it was rough. I that's, that felt so rough. Those days I remember just eating peanut butter and jelly. But I remember eating salads after a while. I I don't ever touch salads still to this day. But that was the one period in my life. Where I routinely might go for a salad every once in a while, cause like you got to switch it up, cause the choices weren't, they weren't enough choices. Bro, I'm I'm I can see, I know you could picture it too. Walking walking in, you know, cause you enter the the nest, that's the basketball arena for people who don't know. Yeah. Walk in to the right is where the food is. Open the door, <laughs> and you can look over the line, <laughs> it ain't good. Sandwich, <laughs> you would you would know if it's not good if all the all the bread is gone for the sandwich. Facts, facts. The bread is gone. It's like, oh no, nah, what are we eating today? I'm stuck. <laughs> I used to just no. I, I remember I looking that line and like if it's not hitting, I'm gonna just sit down to the line, go down because it ain't about to be that long anyway. That's what it really won't. Yeah, well, like of course, yeah, like you said. Of course, then it was hard to eat that food. Plus, you know how much how good they eating up at the the cafeteria. But in like two three months, and I remember Malik. You remember Malik? Malik Mabai? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, he would talk to my dad a lot, and he would always say like, no matter how much uh maybe some of the athletes you know maybe would hate like the kind of discipline or just the hard work that it actually takes to like put into becoming a better athlete. Yeah. But after a couple of months, you are in the best shape of your life. You truly are. Literally. Truly are. Yeah. Nah, that's facts. I'm dedicated to that lifestyle now, though. I don't know nothing else. Yeah, shoot. I still, truthfully, I still need to get back in the gym how I used to. And I think that's honestly a problem because back then, I used to go like crazy in the gym, bro. And so I have this stupid tendency in mind. To try to go back in and do the same things I was doing when I was 18. It don't work like that. <laughs> it don't work like that. Don't do that. Yeah, don't I, do that. I tore my uh it's a funny story. I know my friends are gonna laugh if they hear this, but in college, senior year, because I will always have periods of time where maybe like homework and all that stuff is too much, you know, can't miss the heat. So I finally got some time to go back into the gym. So I was like, all right. I like I like walking. I will walk miles for no absolute reason. I'll just walk. I'll go on like an eight mile walk for no reason. <laughs> like I'll just do it. That's I cool. used to uh, walk to the movie theater. You know where um 
You knew where I lived back in uh, Montverde. Yeah, that's farther than my house. Bro, I walked. I, that's like an eight, ten mile yeah, walk. Ridiculous walk. Crazy, right? Yeah, that's nuts. Straight walk. I, I, I walked the whole way. Wow. <laughs> Just, I did not know walk. that. Walk. But now I'm in college. Senior year. I'm like, all right. I got some free time. I'm gonna just walk the entire time, probably watch a movie on the treadmill. You know what I'm saying? I walk for three hours, feel fine. I'm on an incline though, 6.0. I walk on an incline, <laughs> walk on an incline for three hours, 6.0. Right? Wake up the next day, immediately fall as soon as I get out of the bed. I can't stand up straight for like six days. Cause my hand, no. I'm like it was like on a 65 degree angle. I'm walking around like the hunchback of North of Dame. Yo, from walking. So I'm like, this is just embarrassing. Now I can't even like. It was like, just sore, huh? It was sore. Yeah, like so. If I were to stand up straight, I could like feel my muscles pulling. So I usually have to, like, you know, roll out, ice, stretch. No, I pulled my hamstring, so I know exactly what feeling yeah, it's talking about, but that's crazy. Yeah, dog. I still walk to this day, not on the incline. <laughs> I'm scared. Yeah, no, I wouldn't even touch that. Thank you for telling me that. I'm never going to do it. <laughs> Don't do it, bro. Maybe if I need a good hamstring workout, I'll do it for, like, 15 minutes, but. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you said three hours. You would never catch me on a treadmill for three <laughs> That's like different. Like, no, nah, I bro. used to, um, bro. Like, I, I high key, I would like, you know, when we're playing sports, I would run on the treadmill. But something that I would do, I don't, I honestly don't know if this is unhealthy or not. I used to watch my 500 pound life on the treadmill. I would watch Nick Avocado and I would, <laughs> I would run for like an hour. <laughs> I would. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> that's funny. I ain't even gonna lie. You know, you know the NTC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they would have the uh, little televisions on the treadmills. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> so that's I was hilarious. on days. Like, oh yeah, yeah. buddy. Yeah, oh, yeah, it works. Bro, you weren't even big, like, <laughs> bro. You you'd be surprised. It was just like the, um, I guess it's called fat shaming. It was just like um, the amount of stigmatism it came with being a bigger athlete. In my head, I'm a bigger athlete because one, I remember I played soccer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And of course, in the U.S., they're going for a certain aesthetic of player. Yeah. So sometimes when coaches see a 180 pound 17, 18 year old, they're not really thinking of like striker. Right. Just like, nah, this is a heavier set kind of athlete. He looks a little more like a football player. Like, does he have endurance? And I had asthma. So, of course, I'm, I don't like running long distances, but I could play a 90 minute game. Yeah. And that's why at Montford, they put me in center back because they, they saw like I did have a good, uh, Good sense of view. I could obviously help the team in general, just like position, you know, like I don't want to go into depth about the center yeah. back position, but when you're on defense, you can see the whole field. Yeah. Obviously, uh, for soccer, if you can control the midfield, you can control the game. So my job was to make sure that the defenders next to me, we keep a certain line. So if you don't, I get to yell at you. So okay. Someone's kind of like behind me. I'm gonna tell you, like push up. You know, there's like certain soccer terms that everyone knows, like yeah. push, step, drop. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it was like a thing. You know, you know the offside rule by any chance? Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I'm an avid FIFA, and I watched Jet for a while, but I play FIFA so much, I know a lot of soccer. Okay. I, I a lot of soccer. Fuck it, FIFA. But um, I'm like, I'm like I'm nasty not bad. For no reason. No, I'm nasty for no reason. I gotta play you then. No, I don't think so. Like I'm, I want to play just to play you. I'm not saying I can beat you. I'll play with you. I'll play you. I'll play you. But I'm just letting you know I'm nasty for no reason. Probably are, but I just I'm I know that I like to play FIFA. 
Oh, I, I like that. that. I'm good at it until I play people and I keep losing. <laughs> like, I just, like <laughs> Bro, I just, I just said I was, I, I just told somebody I was nasty the other day and he beat me. So let me not say anything. You might be good. Who knows? I just I was... me though. You see what I'm saying? Soccer is the only sport that like really played that long for. Besides like machine pitch baseball. Uh, oh no. Uh, I'm bad at 2K, so no, it's you're, not the same. You're bad at 2K? Yeah, I'm terrible. Hmm. I don't even like 2K. That's hmm. not a, uh, that's not even like a good game in my head. FIFA. I would have had to run it back though in both, then I probably. You said what? I'll figure it out. Like how to how to play you in both of them, FIFA and 2K. I mean, we don't have to play 2K. <laughs> <laughs> You want to play 2K? Like, I ain't tripping. I don't I'm, care. I'm pretty good at it. Oh, you're good at 2K? No. Compared to people who actually play? No. Okay. Well, I'm not good at all. Um, FIFA, anyway. That's, um, my, that's my team, right? I'm not, I'm not game. So, like, the formations, I guess, mm-hmm. being a center back and being a bigger athlete, coaches already have a certain thought about you from how you look. Right. At the amount of talks throughout my entire soccer career of coaches walking up to me and saying, like, you know, we see now that you are a really good player. You have a great view of the field. You were like, you're good on the ball. No diddy. But, <laughs> like, you use both of your feet. You know, there's certain things that coaches look for. I have all of it. But I'm just this bigger player than from the average, you know, not trying to be racist, the average white kid or just the average kid that's playing soccer, you know, they're skinny, they're lean. Um, I'm not. I got muscle on me. I got a little, you know, I'm a little wider, you know. Mm-hmm. And so to them, that's not a good look for soccer. So I was in the back, but I still helped win games. And so the main speech that I always hear from so many coaches, because first they wouldn't look at me. After they realized, like, I changed the game where I actually, you know, helped the team win, people can't get past me, I'm physical, they pull me over to the side, it's always the same thing. And this is where a lot of, like, like you know, body dysmorphia and just going to the yeah. gym and not wanting to eat some days is just, like, a lot of it came from. Um, pull me over to the side. They say, man, you're, like, you're a really good player. Like, I'm sorry I judge you. You know, like, we can continue to help you with your development. But you're just gonna have to lay off certain foods, and so I was like, I'm, I'm just looking at them. They all go to the same thing, you know. Like, we got burgers, fries, and hot dogs, and that's a very big thing in America, you know. Just for like a certain amount of months, try to stay away from it. I hated eating those things, bro. I would, I would never touch a burger. Sometimes I eat a hot dog, a glizzy, but <laughs> we had cookouts so much in Maryland that because of soccer. I just wouldn't eat that food anymore. Mm-hmm. They associated that with me, and, and bro, it didn't like break me, but just the fact that that had to happen at every team that I would go to, every team that I would uh, switch to. You know what I'm saying? All right. And so I'm like, I already know the deal. All I have to do is continue to show what I do on the field first, and then they completely change their thoughts about me. You know, but that that was a big thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, how did we get to the food topic? Dang. Oh, the food, uh, my bird. My bird. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The my bird food. So it's just like eating that food. I don't know. It's cleaner eats, you know, eating clean, I guess. Yeah. Even at a younger age, your body obviously changes a lot faster. Yeah. But the fact that even for me, because I was eating clean and running a lot because it's soccer, yeah. they made me run more after practice. Dang. That's how I basically just like. My knees were an overuse injury. Both of my knees were bad because all I'm doing is I'm waking I'm waking up hella early, first of all, and I'm riding a bike in the garage because I have to lose a certain amount of pounds to play. They track your weight, they track your fat, they yeah, track your crazy. body composition, like all of it. So of course that's just regular athletes, but since I'm a bigger player, they want me to cut down. So I'm changing my eating habits. Um of course we're eating there at lunch. I'm only eating like cereal for breakfast and fruit and then get to dinner. It's like I had to take a picture of my food every dinner. Wow. Every dinner. And you can't eat anything after that. But I'll get home. I'll probably have to like go outside for a run again or probably just go ride the bike for a certain amount of time, lose amount of calories. Right. It's brutal. 
So yeah. uh, over time, my knees are cooked. And uh, I didn't do all that, but my knees cooked too. Your knees was cooked. I was doing all that basketball, and I went to track practice. Well, you did. I forgot about that. You did do track. You was already out on the track because of Joe. <laughs> Yeah, bro. Some days I was on it twice, but I used to tell my track coach, like, listen, bro, I was just here. Please don't make me do nothing crazy. Like, I'll die out here. Yeah. And most of the time, you know, I was, I was, most of the time I had to do whatever we was going to do that day anyway. Sometimes he was nice, but, man, like, and I used to do jumps, too. There was some days I just couldn't jump. I was like, bro, my knees, like, it was crazy. But, yeah, that's what made me stop basketball totally. Like, I just couldn't take it anymore. Yeah, but eventually you get to a point. I wouldn't even know. I know I know for a fact there's something in, like, jumping that helps your knees grow or something like that. I don't know where the heck Ose got hyped from. After he switched from soccer to basketball, it's over for me. You see, I, you see, I could. I ain't go to. I ain't go to. <laughs> My fault. I don't know what you talk. But you, I, you could jump. Yeah, you could. Hey, hey. Jump is fine or whatever, but it ain't got nothing to do with height. <laughs> when I tell you the doctors told me I was going to be like six foot or something, huh? They told you the same thing? Ooh, like six, <laughs> two, six three, six, four, possibly. I'm like, what? Man, they, they probably I, been in school. That's what I'm saying. And I knew I could jump from a young age just because of like being in school with my peers. Like I was touching stuff that nobody else could touch. So I was like, ooh, I'm a jumper. I knew it. So I'm like, I'm thinking I'm about to be the next Derrick Rose. And I stop at five, like ended up like that. I'm like, Psh. yo, I'd have been in the league right now. If yeah. I'd have been in the league right now, if I had three more inches, I dude. Like, not trying to be funny, but it's gonna come out funny anyway. Nah, you, okay. you think you're gonna be one of those uncles that's you know, I would have been in the league if it was, <laughs> oh, yeah, because the, <laughs> the difference, honestly, the difference is I'll still come on the court and and and. Muscle, yeah. Not even muscle anymore. I don't even, bro. I've been, I've been injured so many times now. We're like, I'm at the point where I can't risk another injury. Oh shoot. So like, no, it's not like. I mean, I can get injured again, but I just don't feel like it. Like, I've been in PT for the last two, three years. Like, I'm tired of physical therapy wow. now. Like, yeah. So like, wow, now man. when I play, I'm chill. I shoot. I do like. I don't really do too much. I don't run too fast. I don't. I just shoot. And pass good or something, but like I'll still cook it though. So like I'll be that would be that uncle. Like, yeah, I could have made the league. The thing is, I quit basketball. Basketball didn't quit me. Mm-hmm. I stopped it. So nobody could really tell me that I reached my full potential. I stopped my potential. Mm-hmm. So I, it doesn't bother me at all. That's I made that executive decision. My knees are still okay. I feel like my knees would have been crazy right now if I kept doing basketball. You might have been bow legged. Exactly. <laughs> that sounds rough. Do you you watch like college basketball or NBA at all? A little bit. I don't. I don't. I don't really tune into like regular season games unless it's like a matchup I kind of want to see. Cause like I'm more of like a playing kind of like I love basketball, but playing it more so. Watching right. it is all right. Sometimes I do like watching college basketball a lot though. Some I mean, a lot, but like I do prefer to watch a regular college basketball game than NBA sometimes. Mm. Because the intensity is just different and like the playing and the IQ is just more like it's all there to me. But like yeah. I'm definitely watching Mark Madness and I'm definitely watching NBA playoffs and finals. All that. Of course. Mark Madness is my favorite time of year. Yeah, 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 exactly. I get I, I like that. We can do that. I'd be screaming at the TV. I don't even be knowing the teams. I just be right. the DL. Right. You, That'd be great. You got a team? Or you watch like certain teams? What are your favorite teams to watch? Yeah, I root for. I like. I mean, MTS. You don't really like do get in it like every year, but they was in it once, so I kind of like want to see them in it more. But like in terms of like a specific team, I don't be caring. Like I just, I just like seeing upsets and like great games. Like as long as it was a great game, I'm like there. So and I like seeing good players. So if there's good players, I might tune into your game. Like like I'll watch. I watch Dallas all day because of Kyrie and Luca. So it's like. It's not like Dallas is my team, but like Kyrie and Luca are there, so I'm gonna watch Dallas. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. I'm trying to think. It is nine o'clock though. We talked for almost. It says one hour and thirty forty minutes. I'm hoping they'll let me save the full hour. I don't know how much they're gonna let me save. 
Like it should have stopped me a long time ago if I can't. I, can't, I don't even know. You know what I'm saying? 